Ahoy my people, hope you're good. Today we got another group's journey to document. They were best friends from Houston with one big dream. But the road to stardom was marred by painful divisions and shattered friendships. However, they overcame the obstacles and media scrutiny, coming back together stronger than ever, reborn as one of the most successful girl groups in history. Three independent women united as one powerful voice. Destiny's Child has sold more than 60 million records. The success of Destiny's Child was unexpected and outstanding, especially considering the fact that the R&B group blew up in a pop-dominated era. Billboard ranks the group as one of the greatest musical trios of all time, the ninth most successful band of the 2000s as well. The group was nominated for 14 Grammy Awards, winning twice for Best R&B Performance by a duo or group with vocals and once for Best R&B Song. Despite the huge success, the group went through many hardships. Not being able to experience normal teenage life as they were often busy rehearsing, they also went through internal fights and public criticism. But through it all, the group came out on top because these girls were survivors. Honestly, Destiny's Childs were great. I grew up on their music thanks to my sister who put me onto them when I was younger. She was a big, big Beyonce fan, so shout out to my sister, man. Anyway, let's get into this. Grab some snacks, kick back and enjoy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's your boy Dre Signs, and I present to you the Destiny's Child story. Let's, let's get, it, get it, get it, get it. In 1990, a nine-year-old Beyonce is a talented singer and member of the choir at St. John's United Methodist Church. She's also enrolled at the Parker Elementary Music School, where she also sings in the school choir. Her parents, Matthew Knowles, a successful salesman, and her mother, Tina Knowles, who ran a successful hair salon in Houston, lived in a nice part of the city, and they were able to provide a good childhood for both Beyonce and her younger sister, Solange. Despite this, Beyonce was a shy loner girl who didn't have many friends. Beyonce was so shy growing up. She walked into a room and if there were kids there, she'd be the little kid that was just nervous. She was quiet. She was to herself. Beyonce never had friends. I go to pick her up and she'd just be pushing a swing. I went and asked this little girl and I was like, why don't you like Beyonce? And she said, I just don't like her. Beyonce also tried to fit in and make friends, so in order to put her out there even more, her parents signed her up to a dance school, where her dance instructor, Miss Darlene Johnson, discovered that Beyonce had an amazing voice for her age. This prompted her to encourage her parents to sign her up for the Sammy Davis Jr. Award Talent Show, which was designed to give the local talented youth a chance to shine. The parents signed a young Beyonce to the talent show and true to her nature, she was very nervous before going out, fearing that the audience would laugh at her. But after reassurance from her teacher, Beyonce found the courage to face the music, face the audience and sing. She was known to be shy, but ever since that day, whenever she got on stage, she would become a totally different person. The more talent shows she competed on, the more confident she got. She would eventually win over 30 talent shows in the Houston area and would be invited to join a local group called Girls Time. A lady by the name of Andretta Tillman was the one that was putting together the group. It was here that Beyonce would meet the people that would become like sisters to her, Kelly Rowland and Latavia Robertson. In 1992, Kelly would eventually relocate to Beyonce's home due to family issues. The group would go through various changes with members coming and dropping out of the group consistently, with the group even having 15 members at one point. The final lineup of Girls Time consisted of six members, including Beyonce, 
Kelly and Latavia. The group would practice relentlessly every day, perfecting their singing, rapping and dancing skills. Girls' Time attracted nationwide attention. West Coast R&B producer Ann Frazier flew to Houston to see them. He brought them to a studio in Northern California with focus on Beyonce's vocals because the producer thought that she had personality and the ability to sing. With efforts to sign Girls' Time to a major record deal, Ann's strategy was to debut the group in Star Search, the biggest talent show on national TV at the time. However, they lost the competition against a rock band, coming in second place. The girls were devastated, but that did not stop Matthew Knowles from fighting for them. He decided to quit his job and become the official manager of the group and rebuild them from the ground up. His first step as the new acting manager was to reduce the six girl group to a lineup of four, Beyonce, Kelly, Natavia and the newly added Latoya Luckett. Aside from spending time at their church in Houston, Girls' Time practiced in Beyonce's backyard and Atina's salon. During the school days, Girls' Time performed at local gigs. When summer came, Matthew Knowles established a boot camp to train them in dance and vocal lessons. After rigorous training, they began performing as opening acts for established R&B groups at the time, such as SWV, Drew Hill and Immature. Beyonce's mother designed the group's stage attire, becoming the group's stylist. Their persistence and hard work would soon pay off. One day, while at school, the girls got the news they had been waiting for. The group signed with Electra Records with the name Destiny, but were soon dropped several months later before they could even release an album. The pursuit of a record label affected the Knowles family. In 1995, Matthew resigned from his job as a medical equipment salesman, as I mentioned earlier, a move that would reduce Knowles' family income by half, and Beyonce's parents briefly separated due to the pressure. It took a toll on their marriage. Confusion and hardships came down on the family and the group. The group even went through several name changes throughout the years, from something fresh, to cliche, to the dolls, and finally to destiny. In 1996, they changed their name once more to Destiny's Child, which was taken from a passage in the Bible. Beyonce stated, we got the word Destiny out of the Bible, but we couldn't trademark the name so we added Child, which is like a rebirth of Destiny. The word Destiny was stated to have been chosen from the book of Isaiah by Tina, Beyonce's mother. Matthew helped in negotiating a record deal with Columbia Records, which signed the group that same year. Prior to signing with Columbia, the group recorded several tracks in California, produced by Dwayne Wiggins of Tony Tony Tony. Upon the label's recognition that Destiny's Child had a unique quality, the track Killing Time was included in the soundtrack of the 1997 film Men in Black. Things finally began to really look up for the group. On February 1998, Destiny's Child released their debut album, Destiny's Child. The album spent 26 weeks on the US Billboard 200 chart and peaked at number 67. The album spawned their first number one single, No No No. Despite the album having moderate success, their growing audience quickly embraced their brand and sexiness. With the popularity quickly growing, Destiny's Child followed up with their second album in July of 1999 the album that would take them to the mainstream, The Writings on the Wall. This is also the first album in which the girls had co-writing credits, giving them their second number one hit with Bills Bills Bills. Man, I can't lie, this album is arguably their best album. I love this album. The song also gave them their first controversy. Bills 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 was the most misunderstood song of the year. <laughs> People were complaining that we were male bashing when a lot of people weren't really listening to the song. They thought these girls are some gold diggers. These girls think guys are supposed to pay their bills. People didn't listen to the whole story. The only way I would ask God to pay my bills is unless he ran my bills up. And people misunderstood it. But actually, that hype 
helped it to become the biggest R&B song of the year. So everything happens for a reason. Despite this, Destiny's Child was flourishing in their newfound success with new singles from the album doing very well. Say My Name became the group's second Billboard Hot 100 number one single and a widespread international success. The song was critically acclaimed, with its music video winning their first MTV Music Award. Hmm, something interesting happened in the Say My Name video, but I'll get to that in a minute. The single to follow that was Jumpin' Jumpin', which also achieved success, further pushing them in the limelight. Unfortunately, as their brand and career became stronger, their sisterhood became weaker. In 1999, Destiny's Child went on tour with R&B group Jagged Edge and Latoya and Latavia started dating two members of the group, which bothered Destiny's Child management as they saw it as a distraction for the girls. Beyonce and Kelly believed that the two boys were getting in their head and getting their egos all the way up. Beyonce said they lost focus, they didn't want to rehearse, do interviews or take voice lessons. Anyone that met us could see that me and Kelly were in one group and they were in another. It was obvious. Matthew also had beef with Latoya's mother, Pamela, who was the group's chaperone on tour, especially for Latavia and Latoya. She would often speak up for the aforementioned girls and Matthew didn't like this as he felt like his authority was being challenged. When Pamela tried to enter the tour bus with the group, Destiny's child management allegedly threatened to have her kicked off the tour if she didn't stand down. The boys from Jagged Edge were not going for that, so they stood up to Matthew. Like, you're not gonna kick somebody's mother off a bus, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. Jagged Edge stood up for Miss Pam because it's wrong. You can't just leave this girl's mother. Matthew was pissed and decided to kick Jagged Edge off the tour. This was the last straw for Latavia and Latoya, and in December of 1999, Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robertson attempted to split with their manager, Matthew Knowles, and his management team. In addition to the drama, they claimed that Matthew held a disproportionate share of the group's profits and unfairly favoured Beyonce and Kelly because they were allowed to sing lead as opposed to them. Beyonce obviously didn't have issues with the management as it was comprised of her dad and her cousins. Kelly was the timid one and didn't really speak up or voice out her opinions, but Latoya and Latavia were growing resentful of the management team and decided to speak up. some days and you're like, okay, I can't pay my cell phone bill. <laughs> you know, like, that's really crazy. So, we had questions. When Toya was like, well, you know, I want to go get another manager. There's no reason that Beyonce driving a Jaguar right now and my mama still is driving this old Mazda. What are we going to do? Do we feel like our voice is going to be big enough to be able to make an impact? Our issue was strictly with management and it had nothing to do with Beyonce and Kelly. Beyonce and Kelly were taken care of financially, while the other two members were not, making them feel disposable and unimportant to the group. They then allegedly asked Matthew for more money, but nope, they instead got kicked out of the group in January of 2000. And here's the crazy part, without even knowing it, they didn't even know they were kicked out of the group. They had to find out in a very, very interesting way. They had no intention of leaving the group, they just wanted more money. That same month, Matthew went scouting and recruited two new replacements without anyone's consent. Those were Farrah Franklin and Michelle Williams, the latter being a backup singer for Monica. This man Matthew worked fast, boy, because he knew he needed a quick turnaround because they were close to shooting the video for Say My Name and they needed four members for it. The video for Say My Name was then filmed with little time for the new members to learn the choreography, but apparently it looked terrible. So the director of the video decided that the girls should just pose on cue for a good portion of the video, which is what you see in like the first three minutes of it. Like BAM and another one, BAM and another one, BAM, another, BAM. That's basically the whole video, you know, <laughs> and that's how the video turned out, but it still turned out to be a great video though. When the video premiered on the 15th of February 2000, that's when Latoya and Latavia found out that they were replaced with two new members. Their vocals were still in the song, but they obviously were not in the video. Farrah and Michelle were in the video dancing in their place. That's a crazy way to find out you've been kicked out of the group. Like, I can't even lie, that's just mad unprofessional. On the same day, a publication of a press release announced the new lineup of the group. Beyonce, Kelly, Farrah and Michelle.
The month after, Latoya and Latavia filed a lawsuit against Matthew Knowles, Beyonce and Kelly for breach of partnership and fiduciary duties. Following the lawsuit, both sides were talking about each other in the media. During this time, Beyonce wrote an open letter to Latoya and Latavia saying, I have shared some of the best moments in my life with the two of you by my side. I have also shared some of the worst. I never complained when you did not sing one note on numerous songs on the album. I've never complained that when I was working my butt off in the studio as I did on the last album, that the two of you were both either sleeping or on your phone 80% of the time. I never complained when the two of you were lip syncing to my vocals on some of the videos and on stage. In fact, I only helped make our contributions appear to be equal to the public. Approximately every three weeks, there is drama caused by one or both of you. It has been this way for at least two years and I don't deserve this. Kelly Rowland also chimed in and said, I think it's so funny how every time there is something good going on with Destiny, one of you will spring something on us. Before I tried to forgive and forget and move on, but I refuse to be run over and receive punches from y'all. Y'all have taught me not to take crap from anyone and to always watch your own back. This was actually kind of sad to see because these were four girls that grew up together and went through hardships together, now fighting in court. After some time, Latoya and Latavia decided to drop their lawsuits against Beyonce and Kelly but kept their lawsuit against Matthew which was eventually settled out of court. While all this was going on, Latoya and Latavia formed their own group called Angel but unfortunately the ladies had issues with the production company and the group was over before it even took off. More turmoil took place within Destiny's Child, as five months after joining, Farrah also left the group. The remaining members claimed that this was due to missed promotional appearances and concerts, but according to Michelle, Farrah could not handle the stress of being in the group. However, according to Farrah, she left because she felt left out as Beyonce and Kelly clicked with Michelle almost immediately and also felt that she had no way to assert any control in the decision making. Another reason she left is because she struggled to keep up with the group's busy schedule. One day she was rushed to the hospital because of dehydration and a stomach virus. And Matthew Knowles was allegedly not too bothered and asked her to come back to work the next day. What Farah didn't know was that there was no days off in Destiny's Child. The other members had to work through illnesses and injuries so in Matthew's mind there was no reason why Farah couldn't do it too. The ladies had press tours, TV shows and concerts to do so they couldn't even afford to miss a day. After deciding that it was too much for her, Farrah quit the group. Beyonce, Michelle and Kelly reached out to her in an attempt to bring her back into the group, but she refused and Matthew allegedly told the girls to cut ties with Farrah and not speak to her anymore. Wow, Matthew was out here moving like a whole villain and unfortunately Beyonce caught most of the backlash whenever a group member left because, you know, she was the lead singer which is very common in groups. Farrah's departure from the group was seen as less controversial though and the group continued as a trio, Beyonce, Kelly and Michelle. The media and several reporters took every chance to ask the group about the two former members and the group issues they had, with one messy reporter even going as far as mistaking Michelle and Kelly for Latavia and Latoya. <laughs> like come on man. <laughs> Just as soon as you think you could never be happier, you run into that crazy journalist that just has to say something stupid. Michelle, here comes a lady, calls Michelle and Kelly, Latoya and Latavia. Now she know dog and well, she know their name. And other messy people, <coughs> Wendy Williams, even suggested that Beyonce should go solo. Um, Beyonce, you sound like you sound really like kind of hostile about this. I mean, has this been this this whole the rumors and stuff? Has this really irritated Tired of you? It. Yeah. yeah. So it, it seems like it's hostility between you and the two members that were thrown yeah, out of the, the group. How's the lawsuit going? We're still working on a settlement. Because I had heard at one point that you that you all you know Destiny, Beyonce and the girls that you all weren't allowed to perform and do a lot I'm of stuff. I'm sorry. Can you please not call us Beyonce and the girls? I have to. Because that is definitely an insult to Kelly and Michelle. No, I like them, but the attention stays on you. But it's yeah. clear that the group is Beyonce and the girls, so why don't you just go solo? No disrespect to the other girls, but you know, we see how things are shaping up. You guys are on TV, the camera stays on you, you get the hottest Dior, they get your leftovers. And I could have very well gone solo, right? but because of my loyalty to the fans and because of my love for Kelly, that's something that I don't want to do and I wasn't ready to do. And we still had a hit album to do and we still are in Destiny's Child and there's still a Destiny's Child. 
Beyonce was fed up with all of these people. However, despite the public controversy, the group continued to grow bigger and remain intact. In 2001, Destiny's Child won their first Grammy for Say My Name, proving to all the haters that the group stood the test of time. We have a Grammy! So the Grammy Award winner, Destiny's Child! Destiny's Child recorded their third album, Survivor, from mid-2000 until early 2001. In the production process, Beyoncé assumed more control in co-producing and co-writing almost the entire album. The album was originally titled Independent Women, after Independent Women Part 1. All the women who independent, throw your hands up at me. What? Hey, listen. That song slaps, like I still bang it out as if it came out yesterday. And I'm not even a woman, but <laughs> I can't deny good music, bro. That song, oh man, it hits differently. The beat as well. <laughs> anyway, I went a little off track there, but Independent Woman Part 1 was later featured on the 2000 movie Charlie's Angels. Which was perfect, it was almost like fate because Destiny's Child is a trio and Charlie's Angels is also a trio. The album was later retitled Survivors as Destiny's Child branded themselves Survivors in reference to the drama that happened within the group throughout the 2000s. The title was later altered to Survivor. Beyonce further explained, I thought about this joke that this radio station had and they were saying, oh, Destiny's Child is like Survivor, the TV show trying to see which member is going to last the longest on the island. And everyone laughed. I was like, ah, that's cute. But you know what? I'm going to use that negative thing and turn it into a positive thing and try to write a great song about it. Time. Matthew suggested that the trio release side solo projects while still remaining in the group. Hmm. Was this Matthew's plan all along? Like maybe he saw Beyonce going solo from the early days of Destiny's Child and the group was just a stepping stone to build her up. Who knows? But anyway, let's see how all the girls did individually. In 2002, Michelle released her first album, Heart to Yours, a contemporary gospel collection. The album reached number one on the Billboard Top Gospel Albums chart. The album had first week sales of 17,000 copies, eventually spending a total of 46 weeks on the chart. Heart to Yours became the best-selling gospel album of the year. Michelle later released her second gospel album, Do You Know, in 2004, with Solange working on some of the album as a co-writer. In 2002, Kelly Rowland collaborated with hip-hop artist Nelly on Dilemma, which became a worldwide hit and earned her a Grammy. We all remember that song and video, our mothers loved it and so did we. Interestingly enough, Kelly became the first member of Destiny's Child to have achieved a US number one single individually. To capitalise on the success of Dilemma, Kelly's solo album Simply Deep was brought forward from its early 2003 release to September of 2002. Simply Deep is an amazing album, honestly. It had beautiful tracks such as Stole, Can't Nobody, Heaven and Train on a Track, which helped Kelly's career to take off internationally. Meanwhile, Beyonce starred with Mike Myers in the box office hit Austin Powers in Gold Member. She recorded her first solo single, Work It Out, for the film's soundtrack, which wasn't that well received. In 2003, Beyoncé made her second film, The Fighting Temptations, alongside Cuba Gooding Jr. Man, that movie, that's a classic right there. I can't even lie, that's a classic. Shortly after, she appeared as a featured vocalist on her then-boyfriend Jay-Z single, O3 Bonnie and Clyde, which paved the way for the release of her debut album. Beyoncé's release was the most commercially successful among the three solo releases. Dangerously in Love debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, selling 317,000 copies in its first week. It yielded the number one hits, Crazy in Love, 
Baby Boy and the top 5 singles Me, Myself and I and Naughty Girl. The album was certified 4 times platinum. Worldwide, the album has sold more than 11 million copies to date. Beyonce's solo album was well received by critics, earning her 5 Grammy Awards in one night. Three years after the break and the release of their solo projects, members of Destiny's Child reunited to record their fourth and final studio album, Destiny Fulfilled. The album introduced the trio to a harder urban sound. The album also saw equality in the trio. Each member contributed to writing on the majority of the songs as well as becoming executive producers aside from their manager. Destiny Fulfilled was released on the 15th of November 2004, selling 497,000 copies in its first week. It was certified three times platinum in the US and was one of the best selling albums of the year, selling over 8 million copies worldwide. Four singles were released from the album, The Lead, Lose My Breath, Soldier, Cater To You and Girl, literally all of them bangers. The first two reached number three in the US. Soldier and Kato To You were also certified platinum. To promote the album, Destiny's Child embarked on a worldwide concert tour, Destiny Fulfilled and Loving It Tour. On June 11, 2005, while on tour in Barcelona, the group announced to the audience of 16,000 people that they planned to officially break up once the tour ended. Beyonce stated that the album's title, Destiny Fulfilled, was not a coincidence and reflected the fact that the breakup was already being planned when the album was being recorded. While making the album, they planned to part ways after their 14-year career as a group to pursue individual aspirations. Their last televised performance before the official split was at the NBA All-Star Game in 2006. About their decision, the group stated, We have been working together as Destiny's Child since we were 9 and touring together since we were 14. After a lot of discussions and some deep soul searching, we realized that our current tour has given us the opportunity to leave Destiny's Child on a high note, united in our friendship and filled with overwhelming gratitude for our music, our fans and each other. After all these wonderful years working together, we realized that now is the time to pursue our personal goals and solo efforts in earnest. No matter what happens, we will always love each other as friends and sisters and will always support each other as artists. We want to thank all our fans for their incredible love and support and hope to see you all again as we continue fulfilling our destinies. So what happened to Beyonce post Destiny's Child? I don't even have to waste too much time talking about it because I'm sure we all know how her career carried on. She went on to have a very successful career, releasing B-Day, I Am Sasha Fierce, 4, her self-titled album Beyonce, Lemonade, Everything Is Love With Her Husband Jay-Z and Renaissance. Beyonce has kept us busy busy and she kept herself busy busy. Her status in the music industry continued to elevate each year she continuously reinvented herself to keep up with ever-changing times and sounds of the music industry. This lady has performed at Super Bowls, started fashion lines, production companies and won the most Grammy awards by any artist in a lifetime, currently holding the record of 32 Grammys. Wow. She's also married to longtime partner and now husband Jay-Z. They have three kids together, including Blue Ivy, who seems to be following in her mother's footsteps. All in all, it seems like Beyonce is winning at life. After the group disbanded, Kelly continued to see success in her career. In June 2007, Kelly embarked on the Miss Kelly tour to promote her second album, Miss Kelly. The five-day tour visited Europe, North America, Africa and Asia. Miss Kelly was released on July 3rd, 2007. She also went on to release another successful album in 2011, Here I Am, which featured the hits Motivation featuring Lil Wayne, Commander featuring David Guetta and Lay It On Me featuring Big Sean. She also successfully transitioned to the EDM dance genre during that period. In 2013, she would release her fourth studio album, 
Talk A Good Game, selling 68,000 copies in its first week and featuring the tracks Kisses Down Low and Dirty Laundry, getting real personal in the latter. In Dirty Laundry, Kelly sings about her struggles and insecurities, first singing about her envy of Beyonce's success, saying, When my sister on stage, killing it like a mother, I was in a rage, feeling it like a mother. When I separate ways, but I was happy she was killing it. Bittersweet, she was up, I was down. No lie, I feel good for her, but what do I do now? Post Survivor, she's on fire. Who wanna hear my ball? Damn. Later in the song, Kelly speaks about the abuse she suffered in a past abusive relationship. On Dirty Laundry, she sings, I was battered, he hit in the window like it was me, until it shattered. He pulled me out and said, don't nobody love you but me. Not your mama, not your daddy, and especially not B. Fun fact, the relationship Kelly's talking about on Dirty Laundry is the same one that Destiny's Child were talking about on the song Girl. Beyonce and Michelle wrote Girl as a request for her to escape the abusive relationship she was in at the time. The fans were the first to connect the dots between the two songs. Kelly said, Of course, I did feel emotional upon hearing Girl. The girls wrote it for me. Destiny's Child is deeper than what people see on the surface. Those are my homies for life. Those girls, we stuck with each other. Period. That's actually heartwarming. We love to see the sisterhood. Kelly also got a few acting gigs over the years in Freddy vs Jason, Think Like a Man and Fantasy Football. She would also become a judge in the X Factor UK and USA. In December 2013, Kelly announced her engagement to Tim Weatherspoon during an appearance on the Queen Latifah show. They were then married in Costa Rica. <laughs> on May 9th, 2014, they have two songs together, born in 2014 and 2021. Following the group split, Michelle got into acting and started doing Broadway musicals. Her third studio album, Unexpected, was released in October of 2008 and got positive reviews but only sold 14,000 copies in its first week. By 2013, she started going through depression and opened up to the world about her battles and the decisions to seek treatment. So for years, I'm in this one of the top selling female groups of all time suffering with depression. Our manager at the time, bless his heart, he was like, y'all just signed a multi-million dollar deal, you're about to go on tour, what do you have to be depressed about? I think he wanted me to be grateful, which I was, but I was still sad. In November of 2020, Michelle announced her memoir, Checking In, How Getting Real About Depression Saved My Life and Can Save Yours, which was released in May of 2021. The accompanying podcast, Checking In with Michelle Williams, premiered on streaming services in December of 2020 and was nominated at the 53rd NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Lifestyle Slash Self-Help Podcast. On the other hand, Latoya decided to pursue a solo career. She signed with Capitol Records in 2004 and released her first track called You Got What I Need. Life after Destiny's Child wasn't easy for her, as she recalls having no money and having to sleep in her car in LA. Despite all this, Latoya still managed to open up her own clothing boutique in 2004 in Houston, named Lady L Boutique. She invested between $30,000 and $50,000 of her own money in the store. She would also reveal that back in her Destiny's Child days, she felt insecure about her singing, as she couldn't sing quite like Beyonce. That didn't stop her from continuing to release music though. In 2005, Latoya released another single called All Eyes On Me, but this song failed to make waves like the first song. Her self-titled debut album was released on July 25th, 2006, with first week sales of 165,000 copies, which was not bad at all. Production on the album was handled by R&B hitmakers such as Jermaine Dupri, Scott Storch, Jazz Blaze and more. She would further release two more albums in 2009 and 2017. She also managed to do very well in Hollywood, securing several roles in Preacher's Kid, Greenleaf, Unsolved and Power Book 3 Raising Canaan. When Destiny's Child disbanded, Natalia Robertson also had a hard time jumpstarting her career. In 2005, she was invited to replace Candy in the R&B group Escape when they were trying to make a comeback, but Latavia declined. Instead, she began working on her own music with producers like Scott Storch, Sweet Beat, and Andre 3000 for her solo debut. 
Her plans went cold and the album was never released. She struggled with depression after that and addiction over the years. Just like Latoya, Latavia also had insecurities about her singing when she was in the group Destiny's Child. She went on to do different business ventures like stage plays and sports management. In 2013, she gave birth to a daughter but would sadly suffer a miscarriage with her second child. She spent the year of 2017 working on her autobiography I Am Latavia and developing a documentary series based on her life. A lot of people have called Latavia bitter over the years since she's always been vocal about her experiences as a member of Destiny's Child. But she says she's made peace with the other group members a long time ago as the issues were never really with Beyonce and Kelly but more with the group's management. Then there was Farrah. Boy, the years haven't been too kind to her after Destiny's Child. After her departure from the group, Farrah Franklin immediately tried to jumpstart her solo career. Immediately after leaving, she appeared on the cover of the book The Art of Mackin by Tariq Nasheed, which was not a good look for her, as Tariq and his book were controversial at the time. In 2002, she signed a record deal with Nelly's record label, but was eventually dropped. She then signed to Fabulous record label and was dropped once again. She also briefly dated Lil Wayne in the mid-2000s. She had tried again and again to kick off her career, but she just couldn't seem to stay out of trouble. Farrah was arrested for disorderly conduct in 2011 and 2014. In 2014, Farrah moved from Los Angeles to Atlanta, hoping to restart her music career. In 2015, she released a promotional single called Magic and Makeup. Throughout the years, she continued to release music on YouTube and SoundCloud. Farrah also owns a company called One Love Pictures and Entertainment. The trio has since reunited many times for music videos, song features and performances. In 2011, Beyoncé was given the prestigious Artist of the Millennium Award at the Billboard Music Awards. During her acceptance speech, she thanked all of the group members including Latoya and Latavia, proving that there was no more animosity between them. I'd like to thank Kelly and Michelle from Destiny's Child. I wouldn't be standing on the stage if it wasn't for y'all. I'd also like to thank the original members of Destiny's Child, Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robinson. Hmm. Notice how Farrah's name wasn't even mentioned. It's likely that there's still bad blood between those two. She wasn't even included when all of the original members reunited backstage at Beyonce's Renaissance tour stop in Houston. I guess she just wasn't that tight with them. Anyway, it's all love between each member and we wish them nothing but the best in their future endeavours. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in the next one. It's your boy Dre Signs, over and out. Peace.